Hello everybody, welcome back to another day, another cluster. So today's example is a 1K Golf. I believe it's a 1K Golf Mark V. Uh, if you ever want to know which model Golf you've got, or VW you've got, have a look at the chassis number here, WVWZZZ 1K. So that 1K Golf um, tells us that it's, uh, I think it's a 2004 to 2009 model off the top of my head. And what we have is a totally dead cluster. So, ignition on, nothing, absolutely dead. Now, initially we had the immobiliser fault, so you'd start the car and it would die. Similar to this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recreate what it was doing and tell you why it's not doing it now. So, it would do this and then it would die and then it would crank and crank and crank. Now, I've got round that because I've done a, a cheeky little immobiliser delete. So uh, to make it mobile around the shop, I've actually switched the immobiliser off. So now when I start it, the car is on running, we can hear it's running, but that hasn't fixed the cluster. So we need to find out what's wrong with the cluster. And for that, we are gonna be using good old VAGCOM VCDS and what we're going to do we are going to do a uh, oh it's jumped to 9m so scroll down here till we get to 1k golf or we could do it by CAN bus but we know it's a 1k and we're going to do a full scan with VAGCOM and uh, reason that we are going to do a full scan is because with VAGCOM VCDS when it scans the unit it also, um, if, you, if you save this scan result, it'll save all the codings for all the units. Now that's gonna be useful to us later because if we, if we mess about with the cluster on a later VW and put a second hand one in, you can wipe the ABS coding. So we wanna be able to put that back in because if you lose your ABS coding and you haven't got the gear to put it back in with, there it is, Mark 60 ESP. That wouldn't be too bad, it's probably just short coding anyway. Um, but if you get a long coding one, it's typically on an Audi A3, you do not want to plug in a secondhand cluster before you've done a scan and recorded the coding because you'll inevitably need to put that back into the system again. So we're going to let that scan and we're going to check the scan results and we're going to see where it leads us. Okay, so uh, that's done a full scan. These. Uh, red units here these are all the individual ecus on the car electronic control units now we're going to uh, save this scan so we can call it up later um doesn't appear to have saved the vin number for some reason normally that would come up with the vin uh we're going to leave that because i don't want to put customer details on so um okay we saved it without a vin number um so we can um view this now Right, so this is the full scan. Yeah, missing signal from the instrument cluster. Immobiliser fault because the cluster was gone. Auto trans because it's auto. ABS. Control for immobiliser, no signal because that's in the cluster. No signal with the cluster, airbags, control module in cluster, no signal. So everything's complaining about no comms with the cluster. Uh, the gateway is saying no comms with the cluster. Now that's interesting. It says immobiliser cannot be reached. That's because the immobiliser is in the cluster and the cluster no worky. So, um, Everything is saying on there. Um, no comms with cluster, basically. Central convenience. Um, oh, this is riddled with fault codes. Control module incorrectly coded. It is absolutely riddled with fault codes. Um, don't know the history of this car. It's done. Apparently 160,000 miles, so they were saying which uh, uh, 
probably no surprise why we've got so many fault codes, but in a nutshell, what we've got is um, 17 instruments cannot be reached. So first thing to do as ever is check the fuses in the various fuse boxes and um, make sure that there's fuses in it and make sure that they haven't blown, make sure there's live or they should be live, and then we're gonna move on to the cluster. So I'm gonna crack on with that, and then we're gonna see what happens uh, when we get the cluster out. And we have some better light. Now, checked all the fuses, all the fuses there as they should be. So we're gonna whip the cluster out and have a look. And uh, this little lever here, first off, we're gonna pull that down, and we're gonna pull the uh, steering wheel down, and then pull it towards us as far as we can. And then we're going to lock it off again. That's to uh, give us some more clearance to get the cluster out through this uh, through this aperture here. And we're going to pop this little bit of trim off. And oh, and then we are meant to take out these two screws here and here, but they're not there. So somebody's been in here before. Hmm. Now, why would that have happened? So, with those two screws out, this uh, cluster pulls forward with two hands. So yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna have to get two hands on this and uh, come back to you in a second. So with uh, two hands, it comes out a lot easier. Now, uh, with these, that's all you have to do. You don't have to unplug the uh, cluster because it's held in by that clip, which pushes straight into the cluster on the back there. So you don't have any uh, levers or anything. So uh, what we're gonna do now, we are going to do one of two things. We're either gonna get a wiring diagram and we're gonna check for all lives there, or we're gonna grab another cluster off the shelf in our stores and we're gonna plug it in and see if it comes to life. And as luck would have it, we have a Mark V golf cluster. It's, uh, you can see it's a Mark V because it'll have the part number of uh, 1K0. Now it's different to our automatic one because we have auto trans and uh, the screen is different. It won't have the PRND on it, but it will do for testing. And if this, uh, if this brings it back to life, then we know we won't have to go any further. So uh, we're gonna just pop that in. And now we're gonna turn the ignition on. And as you can see, it all comes to life. So we don't have to do any wiring tests or anything. This cluster is alive. So um, the cheapskate version uh, or the cheapskate fix is just to um, install a cluster, get an automatic one, obviously. So it's got the PRND on it. Um, set the mileage up and we're away. Um, the problem is also what we'd have to do for the for the cheapskate version uh, we'd have this flashing all the time because we're running an IMO off ECU and uh, this key is not registered to that cluster so we'd have to either make a new key for it blah 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 and um, that's not the right way of doing it so what we're going to do we're going to get the correct cluster for this car the automatic one and then we're going to show you that we're going to program it properly and we're going to end up with no warning lights on and uh, all the keys working correctly as they should so uh, i'm going to have to go on a hunt for that cluster behold the mighty micronus board um, this is what holds the immobilizer information the mileage information etc in a mark 5 golf cluster and lots of other vw clusters and we're gonna be uh, cloning this, so we're making a backup copy. So uh, we're gonna read the data. So we're gonna see if it'll break through the security to start with. And there's one part of it read. So uh, we've saved that already. So um, that's uh, what's called the EEPROM. We're now gonna read the flash. So now we're going to see if we can read the flash Let's see if it breaks through security and there we go so that takes probably 20 minutes or so to read and uh, when that's read what we're going to do we're going to see if we can uh, save this one 
we're going to resolder a few parts back on the board. We're going to reflow it and uh, bench test it, see if we got it working. If it works all well and good, we have uh, a backup copy, um, which we can clone another one. We've uh, seen another one available. They're only uh, 30 quid, 30 pounds, 30 American dollars, no, 30 English dollars, because um, we're here in the UK. So um, we're going to have to get the correct one. Right hand drive ones, automatic, very hard to find, but I have located one at a reasonable price. Um, but we're going to have a go at getting this one done. And uh, if not, our fallback is to clone it. So um, that's going to make a backup copy and uh, we'll see what happens on the on the next scene. Right, it's been about 15, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, it's now doing what's called verifying the read. So uh, any second now, that's going to say verified. Well, there you go. So there's the data in the flash memory. Uh, the data in the two files that were read there is what we can um, use to make keys and all sorts of other things in these clusters, or we can just uh, drop it into another one by doing the same thing again, and that's called cloning. Um, we do have quite a lot of connectors on there. Um, if you can see actually on that chip there, we actually have to lift two of the legs before we solder on the connectors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so now what we're going to have to do is desolder all these connectors. There's actually um, some underneath as well. Uh, solder the legs down and we're going to do the repair work and we're going to see if we can get this one to live again. So let's have a go at that. Okay, moment of truth time. We have our little uh, Micronus cluster test rig connected. Um, let's switch it on. Let's see if reflow on the circuit board has um, made it work or are we going to get one to replace it with well that's a good sign it's working so um next thing to do is pop it back into the car i'm gonna leave the immobilizer off just to test this for a few weeks make sure that this is a permanent repair and then we can reinstall the ladies uh, immobilizer so uh, let's go get it on if you need to replace an instrument cluster on a VW or any other maker vehicle, simply visit us at ecuconnection.co.uk where you will find literally thousands of programming services and components for sale. When you have found the component you need from our database, simply click on the drop down menu for the service that you require. For example, today we are looking for a cloning service for a Mark V Golf or an immobilizer delete for a Mark V Golf ECU. Simply add it to the basket and pay for our secure payment system. Then all you have to do is send us your items and within a few days it will be returned to you, ready for refitting to your vehicle, getting you back on the road in no time for a fraction of the cost of fitting a new item. And just like that, the cluster is back in the car, this time with screws. So I don't know who uh, keeps working on these cars and not putting screws in, but uh, they really need to stop doing it. Okay, they've also broken. Uh, they've also broken this bit of trim here. So there's some clumsy bodges out there. All right, all the trims are back on. Let's get the steering wheel back in a better place, and let's see if it actually works on the car now. So. Let's start her up. Oh, we got lights. Everything's good. Turn the key and we're away. We've got the PRND. So um, just got to do a few things. We've got to clear these codes out. We're going to do a scan in a second. Let's turn that noise off. So we're going to uh, do another full scan. We're going to see if we can clear those codes out, set everything up and uh, see what we're left with. Okay, so we've done a full scan again. Um, we've still got these fault codes, but as you can see now, it picks up the VIN number because it picks it up from the instrument cluster. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to clear all fault codes. And it's going to go through all the units one by one, and it's going to clear all these codes out. And then we're going to see what the last few little things we've got to do till this job is completed. Right, fault code's been erased. And... We are now going to scan the units again, and these are all we're left with. Um, 
let's uh, check what we've got in the engine. We've got glow plug faults, so um, that's something for the customer to look into. Um, probably been living with that for a long time. Um, missing messages for there. We're going to clear those out manually. The thing with VAGCOM, VCDS is, it doesn't always clear all the fault codes out on the uh, full scan for some reason. So uh, we're going to close that down and we're going to cycle the ignition one time. And then we're going to check it again. Yep, she needs some glow plugs in her. Glow plugs, glow plugs, glow plugs. Uh, just the glow plugs now, so everything to do with the cluster has now gone. And um, in the ABS, we're going to... We're going to find that the basic settings I'd imagine needs to do... Oh, control module is not coded. It's lost its coding then. Brake pressure sensor needs to be set. Lateral accelerator sensor, okay, so let's go back and let's go into coding. Um, as you can see, the coding got wiped. That coding was got wiped because um, we fitted a secondhand cluster to it. That's what happens when you mess about with VW clusters. But like I said earlier, what you got to do, you got to reinstate the coding. So with your VAGCOM, if you need to find where the coding is, close that session log, and what you have to do to find your coding in your VAGCOM on your previous scans, you go into the root folder, you go into scans, you go into the most recent scan, um, 15th of the 3rd, where's that one, hang on, let's find the newest scan, which was this one, this is the one we done earlier, as you can see it was the one that didn't pick up the VIN number, if you remember, so we're going to look into that one, we're going to find ABS, let me zoom out a little bit to make this better, right, so we're going to find the ABS coding, And here is the ABS coding from before. Whoops, not there. This one. We're going to simply copy it. We're going to paste it. We're going to do it. And it's out of range. So what have I done wrong? Um, let's see, what did I do wrong here? Shouldn't be out of range. Uh, what's gone wrong? Why is this not right? Right, ABS. ABS coding. That is the coding for this unit. Okay, not sure why it's doing that. Time for thought. Okay, so we've got something very funny going on. Um, normally with VAGCOM, you enter the coding back into the unit. I don't know if this has had a secondhand unit on or something, but um, it's it was just refusing to code. So I've uh, I've got the Think Tool Max out now, and uh, we're gonna 
code it with this. So you go online function, online coding, and uh, gives you a few variations, uh, a few versions of coding to try. Uh, I've just tried one of them. Um, it accepted, it was within parameters, um, but it is still saying incorrectly coded. So I've got some more options to try. So uh, I'm just gonna show you how this, uh, this works on the ThinkTool Max. And we're gonna go single system code. Um, break electronics. And uh, we've managed to install this coding here, um, so current code, and possible coding, that was the one we've entered. Now we've got this one as well, which is very similar to the coding we have. So that's the most close one that we've got. So we're going to see if this one will go in. So uh, ThinkTool Max has done it online, which is uh, fantastic. Um, erase malfunctions. So we're going to clear the fault codes. And read the fault codes. And yeah, that's good. So the code that we did just have with that first one that the ThinkTool Max suggested come up as incorrect decoding. Now what we've got to do is set up the um, uh, basic settings, which um, I might as well use this, but I'm more used to using the VAGCOM. So um, VAGCOM never fails me on that, but it's one of the first times it's failed on the coding for doing it that way. So let's uh, get that hooked up and set the basic settings up. So, on to do the basic settings. We've gone back in with the VAGCOM, even though it just lets down with the coding. Um, well, the cars let us down with the coding. God knows why I've done that. So, uh, let's do this from memory and probably get it wrong. So, to set the basic settings up, 40168. So, we have to enter that into our window there. Coding accepted. Uh, basic settings. And we get our drop down menu. We go through lateral acceleration sensor. On off next. That's that done. So lateral accelerator sensor is now done. I'll read the fault codes again. Longitudinal, so longitudinal has got to be done as well. So we're gonna sign in again. Basic settings, let's find longitudinal. And that one's done. Fault codes now, what have we got? Brake pressure sensor. Sign in again. Pressure sensor. These quite often fail, but this one is okay. Last one is steering angle sensor, and I think we're probably there after steering angle sensor, so log in again. There we have no more codes. So let's go back. And 
cycle the ignition. Let's see what codes we've got. No codes in the ABS. That's good. So let's do a full scan and see what else we've got. I think we've got to do the steering limit stop, which um, we have to start it up. Let's see if we can do that now. So foot on the brake, start it up. Now we turn it full lock right. And we hold it on full lock right for about five seconds. And then we turn it full lock left. And we hold it full lock left for five seconds. We normally do this on a test drive, but it's late and we're in the workshop. We're gonna see if that goes right. Now we get it back to the center point and that light is off. That light is off. So I think we've uh, now got a full clear set of codes. So one more start up. Everything is off cluster is still working so um, there we have it that's everything done we will just do one more scan just make sure everything's clear final little recap um, we've fixed the cluster so we would normally clone it um, if you need one cloned give us a shout we can uh, do it on the bench check us out at ecuconnection.co.uk um, we don't normally try and repair these but uh, we don't claim to repair them all the time, but if we can, yeah, we'll get them working for you. If not, the fallback is what we normally do, we clone them for you. You won't have to do all the um, ABS coding. That was only because we popped a second-hand one in just to try it. Um, that is what happens with these later ones if you put a second-hand cluster in. The little trick which I showed you, which was to record the coding and then write it back in again, is normally perfect every time with VAGCOM, um, but it's the curse of the camera. It was because I was recording it, but um, as I've said many times before, don't rely on just having one tool. Um, this one here, the Think Tool Max, that was um, a big win for us tonight. It managed to uh, code online and get it all up and running without too much trouble. So uh, a big, big thanks to the Think Tool team there. Um, definitely a worthwhile tool having, as is VAGCOM. Um, I think that's all I've got to say for tonight. It's time for me to go and get a kebab and go home. Thanks for watching.